Hello everyone, welcome back to another brand new Azure SEO tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a service principle to authenticate to Azure Container Registry so that you can pull and push images to and from the registry. So here is the agenda for today. So we are going to learn what is service principle, why do we need one, and after that I'm going to do the demo. In the demo, if you watch the, the video just lying down on your bed, I'm pretty sure you are going to understand how service principle work with Azure SCR for authentication and authorization. In my previous video, I talked about SCR token, I talked about admin account, and then I also talked about Entra ID. So Entra ID basically your email address with the password. In my previous video, I said that I will be making videos about service principle and managed identity. So here we are. Today we are going to talk about service principle. So service principle, I have this slide for you. This is the book language, but I'm going to simplify this for you. And I'm going to also push this to my GitHub repository so you can read it by yourself. And I copied the entire context from Azure itself. The simplest way I can put service principle for you is that this is an entity that can authenticate to certain services in Azure and can do certain level of operations. So what do I mean by that? In the SEO token, we talked about a scope map, you remember? So once you create a service principle, you need to assign what level of permission you want to grant for a particular service principle. So this way, you can minimize the attack vector. So for example, you have given only SEO pull rights to a particular service principle. So that particular service principle can only talk to Azure SCR under a particular subscription. Service principle in short going to act like a user on behalf of you. Okay, so service principle has a username and then the password. So we call it differently. In here, I'm going to show you in the demo. So that's enough. Just remember service principle is used for authentication and authorization to talk to certain services in Azure. And using a service principle, you are authorized to perform certain level of operations. Okay, the next one, why do you actually need it? I can give you a very basic example. For example, if you wanted to do something, let's say you wrote a script and you want to talk to Azure and to do the authentication, you need to put your email address and then the password. So what happens if you're working in a company where hundreds of people are going to read the script or they will have access to the script. So this way they are going to be able to see your username and password and this is not something convenient right you don't want to let your username and password be exposed so instead you can use service principle so when you use a service principle you don't need to put your email address and the password this particular service principle is going to be used for certain level of operations against some Azure resources so you don't have to learn too much at this point. Just watch me, follow me, and I'm going to be showing you just in a second. So first of all, we want to go to the Azure portal. And what I want to do, I'm going to be showing you first of all here. So this is a container registry, and I want to push images instead of doing easy login, okay? Push images here using a service principle. And to do that, first of all, I need to go for Entra ID. So just type in Entra. Microsoft Entra ID and you're gonna land in here. Once you land in here, you're gonna click under manage, you're gonna click app registrations. And in the app registrations, you can click on all applications and you can create one new registration. So I could call it YouTube demo. And you choose the default one. This is for a single tenant. If you want for multi-tenant, you can do so. And redirect UI, we don't have any at this point, so you're gonna click on registration so once i register is going to give me the application client id this is actually going to act like a username so you don't have to copy it because it's gonna stay here the next we need to go to the certificates and secrets and here i want to click on new client secret and in here i'm going to call youtube okay i'm not going to put a description just uh, put blah, 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 if you want. And this is the one is very important. So when you create a secret, how long your secret is going to be valid for? So by default, recommend that is six months. And if I click in here, you can see three months, 12 months, 24 months, and you can go custom. 
like if these options are not suitable for you you can go custom so instead so i'm going to click on three months right here you don't need a description it's not a mandatory field so i'm going to click and remember once you do this is going to generate this value and this generated value is going to act like a password here you can see the expiry date and here it tells you the time stamp which day you created this okay and i'm going to copy this here <laughs> just for the time being because we are going to use it this one secret id you don't really need it at this point so that's fine so now we have created a service principle but we have not assigned any kinds of permissions to it okay this is how you create a service principle the next thing we want to do we want to go to container registry and when you go to container registry you are going to see this option called access control if you click here you're gonna see this option called role assignments i'm not going to check my access because i don't have access for this particular service principle so i'm going to click on role assignment so then i'm gonna say add and add role assignment once i do this is going to give you a lot of options like what options you have available and things like that for acr okay next thing i'm going to do i'm i can actually take the pool one and next and here you want to put this option remember the selected role we did is your pool you cannot choose actually multiple at the time i was recording this video and managed identity will talk in the future videos so you choose this one because that's where we have service principle description i don't really write it so select members this is where i want to say so if i type in youtube you can see youtube demo this is the application right the app registrations so i'm going to select this one and once i select you can see youtube demo it has this object id type is app the next thing I want to do, review and assign. Review and assign. So what we are trying to do now, we are saying to SCR, hey, I have got a service principle. It's a, it's a bug, I think. If I refresh it, it's gonna go away. Okay, now it shows <laughs> a single one. So now what we are actually doing is that we are telling Azure Container Registry, hey, this time I'm actually using a service principle which should be granted SCR pool access rights. So what happens if I wanted to get the push rights as well? So I have to go one more time and look for the SCR push. So this one and the next and as it is and we're gonna go. For, so let's go for YouTube, select it and review and assign, review assign. And this time you can see it's a bug, I think. It shows twice. Okay. So now we got push rights and pull rights assigned to YouTube demo. That's the service principle we created, right? And let me clear the terminal. I'm gonna say Docker logout. Okay, I'm logging out from Docker. And remember, as you log in, this is not needed anymore before we were using the entry id therefore it was needed now we are using service principle so an alternative way to talk to acr so i'm gonna say docker login and our let me go with the tech with Pfizer. okay so docker login and then and the username is going to be app registrations I go to all application, I go to YouTube demo, and I need to choose this one, this time client ID, remember, the application or client ID. So this is what I'm going to use as a username. And now it's looking for the password. This password is the value, remember? When you created the secret, it generated, I'm gonna pass in this. So if I do this, you can see this time, login succeeded. So Docker login succeeded, so if I wanted to do a push, Let's say this image I want to push and I want to say test. Oh, actually this tag doesn't exist. So I'm going to go by this one. You can see it is able to talk to us here and actually pushing the image. So image pushing is done. And if you wanted to do a Docker pool, you should be able to pull the image, right? Let me, let me clear this. You should be able to pull the image. Yeah, the image is locally available there for it. It takes it from the cache so what happens if I want to remove the right permission so we had the SCR pool permission 
So in the access control, if you go here, you can see as your push. So instead of writing, actually, I want to only give this particular service principle pull access. So let me delete this. And let's try this out if this works or not. Remember, if you go for a push, it's going to still work because it is in the cache. So what I have to do, if I do this, you can see it's working. So what you have to do, you need to do a Docker logout. So now if I do a login one more time, credential for the password, let me go up. It's actually doing the login. It should be denied. You can see the requested access to the resource is denied. This is exactly what we have seen for ACR token case as well, right? So this is how service principle works. I hope you got the context. Remember to save this credential, basically the password, the value, once it is generated, it is not visible anymore. So if I go back to Entra ID and I want to show it to you and let me go here and then client secret you can see this is not visible anymore and if you read this instruction it says that after creation it cannot be viewed so if you refresh the page after you create the password is gone so you need to generate again so this is how service principle works i hope you understand the concept of service principle why do you need one and how to use it and how to grant permission to a service principle if you like this content give it a thumbs up thank you everyone talk to you soon bye